someone like stole all my money in a bank and I had to try oh, to man. deal with like, all of these living abroad nightmares like all happened to me at once <laughs> in like a matter of four months and I couldn't communicate at all. What's up folks? Today you will learn English with a real life conversation between me and neuro language coach Christina Lorimer. But before we jump into that, we make three lessons every single week to help you understand fast speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Like Marielle, who is an English teacher and says that our videos are the best materials she has found online. So join over 4 million learners from around the world by hitting that subscribe button and the bell down below and you won't miss a single new lesson. I had never learned a language before so there were a lot of things that I learned the hard way and I would say it took me a solid four to five months before I was sort of conversationally, I could make my way around my neighborhood, buy things at the grocery store, do sort of everyday things. Um, well, I was like excelling at the university and that's the weird thing about language, right? Like the act I was like writing 25 page, page papers in Spanish, but I couldn't say anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like that's terrified out of my mind. I had never learned a language before, so there were a lot of things that I learned the hard way. Hard, as you may know, is used to say that something is difficult or demands a lot of effort. It combines with many different words, as you can see here. The hard way is a phrase used to emphasize that something was more difficult than it should be. If you learn something the hard way, it means that you did so by having unpleasant experiences. Look how I used two collocations with hard, hard work and hard times, to praise Anna in one of the recent Beyond Borders episodes. That's really wonderful. And I mean, you've obviously put so much hard work into it, so I definitely would just say kudos, you know, for all of your hard work and for sticking in there through the hard times. And I would say it took me a solid four to five months before I was sort of conversationally Solid often refers to any substance that is not liquid or gas, like ice, gold, or even a cell phone. However, Christina uses it here with a different meaning. When she says that it took her a solid four to five months, she means that she studied the language for four to five months without interruptions before she could communicate in Spanish. To refer to her ability, she used the word conversational. This word is used to refer to a conversation that is not formal, like the ones between friends or colleagues. What she means by saying this is that she could have small informal conversations in Spanish rather than being able to speak the language with ease. You can also say that a book, a TV series, or a podcast is conversational to express this idea of informality. That's the exact word that our guest Jack from Two Fluency used to describe his experience of using friends to learn Spanish. Check it out. So I took audio recordings from the show, slowed them down, repeated them, and then went to normal speed and then repeated them again. The reason I chose Friends was because your reasons too, it's so conversational, it uses the everyday language, and the, the way that they dubbed it into Spanish really worked for me. By the way, if you are learning English to communicate with others, uh, to travel, or even to make international friends, then I recommend you check out our Fluent with Friends course. Now, just like Jack mentioned, it's full of conversational words and everyday language to help you to speak English fluently. Why don't you try it now with our free masterclass? Just click up here or down in the description below. And I'm sure you're going to absolutely love learning English with this iconic TV series. I could make my way around my neighborhood, buy things at the grocery store, do sort of everyday things. If you make your way through or around a place, it means that you are able to move forward in the right direction with success, without getting lost. 
The beginning of this song is a classic example of this phrase. Making my way downtown, walking fast, places past and I'm homebound. Um, well, I was like excelling at the university and that's the weird thing about language, right? <laughs> you probably know the adjective excellent that means something extremely good. The words excellent, adjective, excellence, noun, excellently, adverb, and excel, verb, all come from the same family. So when Christina says that despite having a hard time to converse in Spanish, she was able to excel at the university, she means that she was doing very well at her classes, better than most people, just like this example Ollie gave on the Real Life Podcast. And when I did my English teaching course, there was half natives and half non-natives. And the non-natives really excelled and did great with the grammar <laughs> because they had learned it. Like. The act I was like writing 25 page, page papers in Spanish, but I couldn't say anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I was oh, like terrified out of my mind. What's the difference between the adjectives terrified and terrifying? Here's an easy way to remember. Something ing makes you feel ed. For example, a tiring task makes you feel tired. A boring class makes you feel bored. A relaxing activity makes you feel relaxed. So terrified is when you feel extreme fear. Terrifying is what makes you feel that fear. I used this exact word in the last episode when I was describing my experience facing an earthquake. Yeah. Luckily it didn't last very long, but <laughs> it's just, that can be a very, it's a bizarre and obviously a very terrifying experience. So I can imagine like if you're in a high building. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like terrified out of my mind. <laughs> Did you notice that Christina pronounced the T in terrified differently than the T in out? The reason why is that Americans change the sound of T when it comes between two vowel sounds. The T becomes a soft D, and it sounds like the R sound in languages like Portuguese, Spanish, Turkish, Arabic, and Japanese. Take a look at these words. In which of these words does the T sound like a D? Seattle, Batman, Boat, Cat and Dog, Beatles, Identical. If you find this a bit confusing, I bet you also get frustrated when you can't understand the difference between the words can and can't. That's exactly why we created this lesson on our other channel. I recommend you check that out next. You'll find it linked in the description. Madrid is actually kind of cold. <laughs> like yeah. it was snowing. I was wearing flip flops. I don't know. It was it was a whole bunch of stuff was going on. I had identity theft. Yeah. Someone like stole all my money in a bank, and I had to try oh, to deal with like all of these living abroad nightmares. Like all happened to me at once <laughs> in like a matter of four months, and I couldn't communicate at all. So yeah, and I mean it made me realize too, just like. Communication is the cornerstone of my personality. I think especially it's interesting that you started with a rather dramatic experience living abroad, but you, you didn't give up and, and you you continued, you, you got the bug anyway, right? You continued to study and live and work abroad. It's actually a abroad. great way to put it. So I ended up switching my, it, it, it changed the whole course of my life. Madrid is actually kind of cold. <laughs> like yeah. it was snowing. I was wearing flip flops. Flip flops are this type of footwear. In Australia, they are also known as thongs. Be careful though, thongs in American English are these. A more general term for open footwear like this is sandals. I don't know. It was, it was a whole bunch of stuff was going on. I had identity theft. Yeah. In this part, we have two examples of vague language. That is, words that are not exact or precise. The first one is bunch, which means a group or lots of the same things. The other one is stuff. That's a synonym of things. So when she says a whole bunch of stuff, she means lots of different things. You refer to vague language when you aren't sure of all the details of something or just to save time in a conversation. Christina refers to many difficult situations she faced while studying abroad in Spain. One of them was identity theft. 
Identity theft is when a person uses your personal information like ID, address, picture, or signature and pretends to be you in order to have some financial gain. Look at how she describes what happened to her. Someone like stole all my money in a bank and I had to try oh, to deal with like, all of these living abroad nightmares. She refers to the situation as a nightmare. Literally, a nightmare is a bad or terrifying dream. However, it is used as a broad term to refer to any unpleasant experience. Like all happened to me at once <laughs> in like a matter of four months and I couldn't communicate at all. Christina is talking about how many bad things happened to her in just four months. She says that it all happened in a matter of four months. A matter of is used here to refer to a small amount, quantity of things. For example, they met, fell in love, and got married in a matter of five months. Or, I like this recipe because it cooks in just a matter of minutes. Yeah, and I mean, it made me realize too, just like communication is the cornerstone of my personality. For Christina, it was frustrating not being able to communicate in Spanish because she says that communication is the cornerstone of her personality. So what do you think she means? Communication is important, boring, scary. Right. So cornerstone refers to something that is an important quality or thing that things are based on. So what she means is that communication is a big part of who she is and how that is important to her. I think especially it's interesting that you started with a rather dramatic experience living abroad, but you, you didn't give up and, and you, you continued, you, you got the bug anyway, right? To get the bug is to become very excited or interested in something. For example, John is really enjoying trying out new recipes lately. It seems he got the cooking bug. In this case, Christina got the travel bug. However, if something bugs you, it means that it bothers you. In other words, it makes you feel annoyed or irritated. You, you got the bug anyway, right? You continued to study and live and work abroad. That's actually a great way to put it. So I ended up switching my, it, it changed the whole course of my life. When I mentioned that despite her bad experiences abroad, Christina got the bug anyway, she replied by saying, that's actually a great way to put it. If you say, this is a great, good, nice way to put it, it means that something that was just said was very clever and well expressed. I hope that you have enjoyed learning with the Beyond Borders talk show. Now, before you watch the scenes without subtitles and answer some quiz questions, if you have enjoyed this lesson with Christina, well, there's so much more for you to learn. Make sure you download our app so that you can listen to the full interview for free. Just click the link down in the description. Aw, yeah. I had never learned a language before, so there were a lot of things that I learned the hard way. I would say it took me a solid four to five months before I was sort of conversationally, I could make my way around my neighborhood, buy things at the grocery store, do sort of everyday things. Um, well, I was like excelling at the university and that's the weird thing about language, right? Like the act I was like writing 25 page, page papers in Spanish, but I couldn't say anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like that's terrified out of my mind. <laughs> Madrid is actually kind of cold. <laughs> like it was snowing, I was wearing flip flops. I don't know. It was, it was a whole bunch of stuff was going on. I had identity theft. Yeah. Someone like stole all my money in a bank and I had to try oh, to deal with like, all of these living abroad nightmares, like all happened to me at once <laughs> in like a matter of four months and I couldn't communicate at all. So yeah, and I mean, it made me realize too, just like communication is the cornerstone of my personality. I think especially it's interesting that you started with 
a rather dramatic experience living abroad, but you you didn't give up and, and you you continued. You, you got the bug anyway, right? You continued to study and live and work abroad. That's actually a abroad. great way to put it. So I ended up switching my, it, it, it changed the whole course of my life. when a person doesn't have any support and maybe even resources mm -hmm. and opportunities. Um, these days we have, we have the internet, we have YouTube. So uh, it's, it's a great way to self-educate. Mm -hmm. So when I just started, I, of course, was um, very afraid to speak 